You got 60 and you want to do shit, right? Season 1 is almost here, but there's so much to do. Or is there? Well, you want to get renowned. Pass ketchup. Plus stuff like the mod dailies. Not mandatory. And you want your legendaries. So Soul Ash from Torghast is another. Pass ketchup. World quests and callings. And Not mandatory. <sighs> you know what? <laughs> Let's just get into the video. Ketchup. The first thing to do when you turn your PC on is to subscribe and enable the bell thingy. <laughs> yeah, we are doing this again. I know what you're thinking, but what about my video? Well, we're getting to that, but if you like our stuff, it helps out tremendously to subscribe and let the algorithm Arts of destiny and happiness dictating our lives and What the fuck are you doing? Oh, uh, just- Oh look, a feral buff! Oh, oh shit, let me get it! Uh, where were we? Oh yeah, cringy jokes, Marcelian popping in on cam. Oh, oh yeah, shameless plug. So subscribe. The first thing you need is obviously to reach 60, but really finish the story to actually unlock the end game. We already covered this topic in our leveling video and for your first time there isn't much to say. Two tips I would give you is to go to Maldraxxus when you get level 54, do only the main story, hop into Arden World, do the main story there and maybe one or two side quests if you are not 58 since 58 unlocks the last bit of the story in Arden World before you are sent to Revendreth. The last quest in Revendreth starts at 60 and if you want to save as much time as possible to get on the real stuff, you might only have time for two, three side quests. Unless you are playing alt with the Threads of Fate leveling experience in which case you are already on your covenant with your abilities and everything and you don't really need to go through the story anymore, which is great. After that you will start the actual covenant campaign. This is important because it unlocks your actual endgame and all of the systems. It will give you your Anima weekly quest and the Lost Souls weekly quest which is not available as of this recording but should be by the time you watch the video. These will give you Renown which is the most important currency when it comes to your character progression. If you want to push any type of content this is something you will want to do. Keep in mind you will have catch up mechanics so if you miss a week or you play an alt you don't need to worry about not being on par with someone that farms these the minute they are available. Renown basically unlocks more stuff in the Covenant Sanctum but most importantly it unlocks further paths in the Soulbind trees for all the Soulbind. And this is more player power you will want eventually. As you do the campaign you will unlock the Torghast Tower which gives you the option to do your Soul Ash weekly farm. This is the second thing you really want to do since Soul Ash is the material you need for legendaries. You need a base item which is made from crafting professions as well, but you can either make that yourself or buy it off the auction house. Should you make your legendary though? That's something you need to decide since you won't be able to just make any legendary as soon as you loot the power. Think carefully, especially if you need and want more than one legendary. Also unlocking the rune carver lets you loot some legendary recipes from Torghast like the Enhancement Shaman Legacy of the Frost Witch. The Soul Ash Farm is yet another grind that has a catch up in place if you miss a week or are generally behind with an alt. Plus you can do Torghast for adventure companions and other non-mandatory things. And speaking of which, the last thing you want to do mandatorily are the daily callings which replace the emissaries. These reward you with reputation which is only really mandatory if the rep faction has a legendary recipe you want. like. Chains of Devastation for the Shaman class. There are obviously options for your class as well and you can check all of these in your collections tab where you will have a new section called Powers. Getting gear is subjectively mandatory. You don't need gear really unless you want to queue for LFG heroics or pug groups that will ask you to have a certain eye level. But personally, I feel gear is something I need to not hold my group back. So it's a 50-50 mandatory thing I guess, which is why we are putting it separately. If you want to craft stuff and have the resources, you can get a base of 151 eye level gear from professions. And if you farmed enough reputation, you can buy the crafter's mark 
2 recipe and boost the eye level to 168. This is sold by the maw vendor Venari, for which you need the Cordial Reputation level. Mm, cordial? What the fuck is that? Or simply spam Heroic Dungeons to get around 170 eye level. Heroics drop more and it depends on your comfort level if and when you want to stop. Because really, you want to do Mythic Zeros for the best way to get gear prior to Season 1 opening with 184 eye level gear. We started doing Mythic Dungeons at around 150-ish eye level with a pre-made group, but you may want to wait with 170 eye level if you do pugs or, you know, generally less stress since shit, it's decently hard there. During this time, world quests award a gear piece every now and again. The eye level for the items gets higher with yours in tandem as it was in BFA. There are significantly fewer world quests this time around with gear rewards, but you really only need one or two to push you past that threshold so you can hop into the content of your choice. There are and always were things you could do in the game that were not that important or things that you don't have to do. Usually these are things that do not provide player power or player progression or at least not enough to justify doing them if you don't want to or like to. For example, farming reputation. Although there are a few items you can buy with reputation, the items are at low enough of an eye level that you might as well do dungeons for higher pieces. But if you did your dungeons and you still want to do your daily callings and weekly dungeon quests, you might find that getting rep is awkwardly quick this time around, and maybe the item you can get is just the one to fill your weakest slot. Plus Anima for the Covenant Sanctum upgrades. Anima is important. World quests fill this as well. You can get Conduit upgrades, which at the moment are minor upgrades, but the argument still stands. If you are done with anything else, you can clear your world quests for those potential upgrades. And Anima, again, anime is good. Anime helps with the quality of life improvements in your Sanctum, but doesn't make your character do more damage. So, you know. The Maw is another debatable topic. Although Torghast is something you don't really want to skip because that soul ash is the bomb, the Maw dailies give you Stygia, which can be used at Venari. She sells spatial realignment apparatus, which adds a socket to a specific gear piece. Now, you can consider this mandatory or not, but it is something that improves your gear. Other than that, she has upgrades for Torghast, so your runs are better. And she also sells the Crafter's Mark II we talked about earlier. Also, in the Maw, you will find the Wrath of the Jailer event that has the chance to get you a 183 eye level piece of gear. Depends how lucky you are. And if you are lucky, please don't let us know. I cannot eat salt on my food anymore. Outside of this, some of the objectives we talked about, even the Covenant adventures you use to send followers on, missions, you know, can net you leathers and other materials for professions. Leveling your profession can be a good way to make gold and you will find optional objectives on your map that can aid you with this. And for more details on gold making, hey, look, we already have a gold making guide. Haha, <laughs> fancy that. Lastly, farm mounts. <laughs> Hell yeah, I finally have my frog mount I've been dreaming of since I was a little girl. This one is easy to get by just looting an unusual large mushroom from any mob related to Ardenwald, dungeons or outside, using it on a pile of dirt and killing a big ass shroom that spawns to drop the mount. There are other pretty easy mounts to get like the baby cradle and the red ghost horse they didn't have time and resources to finish. Thank you to our Patreons for supporting our content on YouTube and on Twitch. Thank you very much guys, you actually make a lot of this possible and we couldn't be more grateful. And if your dear viewer found this interesting, helpful and you are still here at the end of the video, and you want to support us a little bit more, check the link down below. It links you to our Patreon, to our merch website, where you can probably find something that you like. <clears throat> and of course, thank you to our Twitch supporters, subscribers, followers, and everybody there who are very, 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 very generous. Uh, thank you for supporting that. We do stream five days a week, and you can check that on twitch.tv slash Online, where you will see us start the raid soon. Thank you for watching the video. See you next time. I've been loving it then, I still love it now Still, I play wow Still, I play wow Getting better every day, let me show you how Cause still, I play wow Still, I play wow It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day It's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play Whether it's classic or retail, I'ma do a slash bow Still, I play wow